Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at this problem here. It is asking us to calculate the stresses at point A and B using the uh, von Mises uh, equation. So pretty much the von Mises equation considers the normal and uh, shear stresses within the material at any given point then we use these values to calculate the equivalent stress on the material so in other words um, it, it is the combination of the tensile compression and shear stresses into a single value then that result is compared to the uh, yield strength of the material which will indicate the maximum stress it can bear before yielding or failing. As you can see, this, this part is subjected to uh, the, a different kind of forces. So we have a force acting on the Z um, axis, also the uh, X axis, and there is also a, a torsional shear force um, on, on that section as well. So the first thing um, we're going to model the this component here we don't have to do the wall that's why we have the simulation in SOLIDWORKS so let's start so we have a 15 millimeters uh, diameter and 100 millimeters in length so let's create the part so let's start a new new component So the first thing I like to do, as always, let's go to settings and we can just double check the, the units that we are on the right unit. So let's change it to millimeters because the problem is in uh, metric. So uh, we can take the uh, right plane and create a sketch from the problem we have this as a uh, diameter 15 millimeters diameter so we can close that and then we can just give it some extrusion and the length is 100 millimeters long so we created now the uh, the component and that's all you have to do for this problem so once you have that we can go to the simulation and create a new study we can rename this as you wish i'm just going to leave it like that static one and general simulation static because that's what we're doing let's hit okay so going back to the problem um, it is giving us the material type which is um, aisi 1006 steel um, so that's the first thing we're going to select. So under part, right click, apply edit material, and then I have already the um, the material selected here. So I can just go there quickly and click apply and close. This is important, and actually we need it. We need to apply a material, otherwise the simulation is not going to run for you. So the next thing we are going to apply the, the so there are no bolts, no pins, so we're going to ignore the connections. So we can jump to the fixtures. So under fixtures, we are going to apply the three forces that we have. So we have a force on the Z, on the X axis, and also there is a torque. And these are the values. So we're going to put that in the simulation. So right click on fixtures. So the first one is, oh, I skipped a step. So let's um, fix this uh, geometry. So we're assuming this, uh, going to select that face for the fix. Now we're ready to apply the forces. So the first one is the, um, the force. So we have the first force acting on that face. And according to the problem, this is 550 Newtons. And we are going to reverse the direction of the force because that's what we have here on the, under the P. 
So we can just uh, click here, reverse, and then now we have the, actually I can ping, keep this visible. So whenever I click OK, I still have this box open. So my next force is acting on the um, on this Z direction. So, so we're going to, um, again, select that face. And um, right here, we're going to select direction. We're going to select the front plane, and um, in order in order to give uh, the direction that we want, so we can play around with this force uh, section here. So let's make it normal to that plane, and that's exactly what I want. So if you look at the um, force F, so it is acting on the Z axis. So we need we just need to flip it. Because it's acting on the others, on the other direction, so we can just um, reverse direction. And the value for this one here is 25. Um, actually, this is 550 newtons. So. So I made a small uh, mistake. So this is actually the F, so 550. I'm just going to change the other one to 4,000. So I'll show you how to um, update the other the other force. So, so this one here, you can just edit definition. So this one here, instead of 550, we're going to change that to 4,000. And that's how you update that one. Okay, so next we have the torque. As you can see here, the torque, we have uh, 25 Newton meters. So we can apply that torque to this face right here. And then on this box right here, we're going to select the cylindrical face so we can give it a direction and you can see the is going um, counterclockwise and um, actually uh, clockwise, and we need it to be on the counterclockwise. So we're just going to uh, reverse reverse direction as we need it here. So we're going on counterclockwise. So um, and the value for that is twenty five. Newton meters, and we can hit OK. So now we have all three forces applied to the material, to the part. Now let's create a um, a quick mesh. You can refine this as you wish. Uh, just keep in mind the the finer it gets, the longer the simulation time is gonna be as well. So keep that in mind. For for now, I'll just keep it as the default. Click OK. So now it's doing the the mesh, and we are ready for start the simulation. So we're just going to click on Run this study. Okay. So the simulation has been completed. By default, we get these three type of uh, results. And uh, as you can see, we have the bone misses already incorporated in there, and that's what we're looking for. So let's refine this a little bit so we can read the values better. Uh, the first thing I like to do is I'm just going to make these uh, megapascals, and then let's go to the chart options. And I like to read these in um, floating formatting, change that to zero. And um, let's hit OK. So that's the uh, stress one, the bone misses. So the question is to find the stresses at point A and point B using the bone misses. So, so we have the bone misses, but we don't have the, the values exactly at those locations. So for that, we're going to use the Prove. So let's go to plot tools and then select prove 
and then we can just pinpoint at the location that we want in order to get the values. So point B is around this section here. So I'm just going to go to that section, zoom in, and let's do the proof. So this is about 192, 197, and um, this is 175. Uh, see if I can, yeah, 192, 190. So it's around 190, 195 at point B. So now let's check the other value at point A. Point A is acting on the top. Same thing. Let's go to the probe tool and we can see here this is around 78, 83, so around 80. So let's compare that to the hand calculation and see how close we are. So according to the calculation at point A, we have 75, almost 76, which is pretty close to, to what we obtained. And then at point B, we have around 200, and that's what we also um, obtain in SOLIDWORKS. So the next thing is let's, let's calculate the factor of safety at point A and B. We'll follow the same steps, but now using the factor of safety. So they have 3.6 and 1.4. So let's see what we come up with. So let's go to the um, results, right click. And there is an option here, define fa factor of safety plot. All you have to do is you can leave it automatic or select the vote misses um, because that's what we want and click OK. So same thing, point B is around this area here. So let's go to that area and see what the fa factor of safety is there. So we got around um, 1.5. So now let's go to point A, which is right here on top, prove. And this is around 3.4. So 3.4 and 1.4. Let's see what the calculation is telling us. So 3.685 and 1.4026 at those two locations, which um, has a small, very small percentage error, uh, still within the acceptable range. And uh, finally, we can we can see we can see how the um, we can see the displacement of the of the component um, after we put those forces in. So we can just uh, double click on the displacement, and we can see that the maximum displacement is happening at this section with a value of 0.413 millimeters. Um, we can also see how this is going to behave if you go to the plot tools and click animate you'll see how the part is going to act based on those forces you can increase it increase your the speed but to make it more realistic and for better visualization we can reduce that to see how the part behaves and this is how you calculate the these uh, forces the, these combined loadings using the Von Mises equations in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.